new report from the Vermont Agency of Education highlights enrollment, proficiency, and spending trends. According to the report and compared nationally, Vermont has some of the smallest schools, the highest staffing levels, and highest expenditures per student. This comes as assessment scores are declining. Our Lucy Kale joins us after speaking with state education officials. Lucy, what have you learned? Catherine, the report shows the assessment scores are about 10% lower for all grades and subjects compared to pre-pandemic data. The information is nothing new to state leaders, but they say it gives them a solid jumping off point for growth. Despite the legal battles over her position, Vermont's Interim Secretary of Education, Zoe Saunders, is getting to work. After contentious election season over school spending, Saunders is working on finding a sustainable way to balance education costs with student learning. How does that um, investment in education um, really uh, help us to achieve our desired goals of ensuring every student has a substantially equal educational experience and also at a rate that taxpayers can afford? The Vermont State Education education profiles show total enrollment has decreased statewide and compared to other schools nationwide, Vermont's high spending and staffing are not yielding smarter students. The report shows proficiency rates in English language arts and math declining, scores which took a hit during the pandemic. Despite that, Vermont Principals Association Executive Director Jay Nichols says he's seen some positive trends in the past year. My members, mostly principals um, and assistant principals, say that this year right here is the first year that they really feel like it's getting back to normal school. You know, I think we're doing pretty well. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't, you know, continue to focus on trying to improve. For improvement, Saunders says part of the state's strategic plan asks how they align the resources available at the state level to support and sustain the biggest needs in the field. In some instances, um, it may be conversations around consolidating schools. In other cases, it might be around how do we share resources or be more intentional about um, organizing our programs in ways that um, can reach a broader audience without the need to consolidate. But Nichols believes consolidating isn't necessarily going to bring in money. I think over time it could help uh, stop the rapid increase of costs, but it never was met as a money saver as far as, I, as far as I'm concerned. It was met as an ability to offer students more offerings, especially at the middle school and high school level. The report details how more resources are needed for schools with free and reduced lunch recipients and English language learners. Vermont's Pupil Waiting Program tried to address the need to ensure equity amongst all students. That's what we should be trying to do in our public education system. But it in part led to subsequent tax hikes across Vermont. Saunders says it's a top priority going forward. Some of the conversation is around how do we reinvest um, in order to maximize the limited funding that we do have on those strategies that are going to be most impactful for students. Um, and having conversations also around how we do that in an affordable way. This report is only the first in several reports about the state of education. Saunders says the agency is going to meet with education leaders to analyze some of the best practices uh, our schools implementing and how those can be shared with other supervisory unions across the state. Catherine. Lucy, thank you.